Welcome to The Way of Things. This is lecture number six in optics. And the title, I guess, of this uh, particular lecture I call Ramrocks and Lion Logs. Now, I guess that can, uh, we can explain that title a little bit. Uh, back when I was uh, guiding, uh, for Desert Bighorn Sheep. Uh, you spent a lot of time glassing and looking for Bighorn Sheep. And the way I knew that myself or my client was uh, actually engaged in the hunt was if you ended up seeing ramrocks. And a ramrock is something that you see uh, through either your spotting scope or your binoculars and it's usually far off. And you think, hey, I think I got a ram. And after a closer inspection, sometimes going from the binocular to the spotting scope, you would find that it's only a rock that had the honey color of the horns or looked like the white rump patch of an animal, um, but was nothing more than a rock. And I had the same uh, process that I saw in action on a trip I took with my dad to Africa, we went as tourists, uh, wasn't hunting, but we quickly found that while you could see zebras and wildebeests to the point where you couldn't miss them, they were in such numbers, and a giraffe stu stood out across the landscape was just incredible, it took some looking to find lions. Uh, being a top predator, there was nowhere near as many of them. Um, as these other animals, but also uh, being a predator, they had taken to uh, camouflaging themselves. And often a lion, uh, you looked out across the savanna and you saw a log and you think, hey, I think I found a lion, uh, only to find out that it's just a log. Indeed, some uh, logs took on the persona of a male lion where an elephant would knock a whole tree over and leave the tree roots up and they would kind of weather and get bare and from a distance it looked like a, an adult male lion. Uh, I'm sure people have made that mistake and found out in a deadly way that that uh, log was indeed a lion. Uh, just the reverse of, of but most of the time you looked out there and you thought it was a lion, but it was just a log. And the same way that if your mind's engaged, uh, you're looking for a bighorn sheep and you're going to find ram rocks. And it tells you something about your mind's eye. Um, that a lot of it is in seeing animals is the utilization of your imagination. And if you don't have any kind of memory uh, for your imagination to work on, you're going to find it difficult and indeed in some cases impossible uh, to see animals. Uh, if you don't know in detail what a coyote looks like, the coyote can stand oftentimes right out in the open and people will just walk right past him and he knows to stay still because standing still is a form of invisibility and he'll just watch him go by. And the person who has seen a lot of coyotes has in their mind this multi-dimensional view of a coyote and their mind is, is working on it, their imagination. And so when they see an object, and this is all happening subconsciously, their mind picks that up and says, well, is, you know, does it fit a coyote's broadside, quartering away, standing straight toward us, tail to us? Your mind does that all, all on its own. But you've got to have a memory base for your imagination to work with. If you don't have a memory base uh, for your imagination, it has nothing to work with, so you just walk right by it. Or in the case of using a scope, 
you would just zoom, you just search, do a search pattern, and you just search right past him. Because unless he's really standing out, your mind isn't trained. You don't have the memory to uh, pull that out. Now, with spotting scopes and binoculars and a person using that, of course, they're going to see more coyotes, they're going to see more bighorn sheep, they're going to see more deer, uh, more jackrabbits, and so forth. And with that, they're building in their memory this image. So that at this subconscious level, your mind, as it's walking, you're walking across the desert, your mind's at work. And without you having to do anything, without you even being conscious of it, it's saying, is that rock a coyote? Is that rock a bighorn sheep? Is that rock a deer? Is that rock a, a jackrabbit? And if the message and the processing goes through and says no, then you're never aware of it. All this is happening all the time. But if something clicks and says, whoa, that's a jackrabbit, now your mind will put that up into your conscious mind and say, oh, look at that jackrabbit. But you have to have seen jackrabbits and have experienced and enough experience to see jackrabbits in, in a multi-dimensional left, right, top, bottom, from uphill, downhill, good light, poor light, etc. And the more you have that memory, the easier your mind is going to have to pick it up. So one of the tools that you want to do when you're out in the field, and let's say you come across a coyote and you're watching it it would behoove you to actually spend some time looking at them. And even looking at them with a spotting scope and then go back to a binocular and then look at them with just your bare eyes and back and forth. And if you spend 10 or 20 minutes doing that, you'll be putting in this vision, this memory of a coyote. What does the coyote look like when he's just bare eyed? Because you might pick him up let's say with your binoculars, oh there's a coyote. Okay, so you sit down, you put your tripod up, you're looking at your coyote, and now you decide, now I know where he's at. And so I look at him with just my, my own eyes. And now, you know, I can see him there. I can actually make him out as a coyote. Whereas before you didn't. Before you were completely unconscious of the fact that he was there until you put the binoculars up. But now, you go to your spotting scope, and you set up a spotting scope and you look at it. Well, now you're up close and personal. You can actually see the texture of his fur, any design pattern he has. You can see his teeth. You can see it make out his nose and his eyes. And you, you were able to make out his level of awareness of you to a, to a greater degree. You might be aware that, say, that coyote is, is aware of me, but I'm far enough away where he's not concerned. But then you go to the spotting scope and you're able to pick out a finer level as to his level of awareness. That the binocular was telling you where it was, whether it was aware or not aware or how aware. But now you, you pick up maybe through the spotting scope and you notice, wow, he keeps looking off this one direction. And now you have, you've picked up that not only is he aware of you, but he's actually aware of something off to the right. Maybe he's looking at a bird, or maybe there's another coyote. Uh, that his body language is giving a message to that other coyote, hey, there's somebody here, but they're quite a ways off. And, and you wouldn't have maybe picked that up in the binocular, but the spotting scope, you're able to because the body language is so subtle. So here again we find that we're learning directly from the masters. And it's one of the uh, things that from that you will just learn all kinds of things. And you always, to kind of recap, anytime you see especially unique wildlife, Say you're not familiar with desert bighorn sheep and you've come across one. Um, and, and let's say you come across a ewe. Well, the ewe doesn't have big horns. They're not as uh, spectacular uh, as a ram. 
But if you look at that animal, spend some time. First of all, the ewes are very important to the population. They're going to give you a lot of information. Uh, so don't discount because it's not a trophy animal or something spectacular as it might be. Because if you spend some time, you'll learn not only their habits and the way of things, uh, and the way of things as it pertains to a desert bighorn, but you'll also put into the, your mind that image. And that image of a you will definitely help you resolve the image of a ram. So you might be walking further or another day in a different area, and your mind is working again. The subconscious and it says, you know, that looks like a bighorn sheep. And then it goes into you. The, the image, of course, has gone into your subconscious. And now your subconscious is going to kick that up to the conscious and say, hey, take a look over here. I think that's a bighorn sheep. And now you see a spectacular ram. Because much of the body, the color of the fur, the texture, the body shape of the legs, and back, and so forth, and the proportion to a cactus and all that was there. And your subconscious was able to resolve that that's a bighorn sheep even though it's a big spectacular ram and you've only seen ewes. But you took the time to burn that image in. And this knowledge is the kind of knowledge, this, this subconscious burning in this image, is actually a form of knowledge that you can only acquire through experience. You can't read this knowledge, I can't give you this knowledge, uh, in this lecture of, of that image and how it pertains in the wild. Even, even photographs are helpful, but it's not the same as being in the three-dimensional world of, of sunlight and shadow and true distances and so forth. And that's the knowledge, the experience slash knowledge that you need to have that will begin to make a difference learn how you walk and what you experience.